The stock market will always fluctuate. Day by day it changes, never remaining static. What is inevitable is that we will encounter crises in our time. So it is wise to have our financial house in order and make preparations, have a plan of action, and take appropriate steps to the best of our ability to make it all happen. There are very simple strategies and tasks that will certainly benefit those who go for it and do their best. Those who take too much risk will find themselves regretting it inevitably. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to talk about preparation, we're going to talk about getting your financial house in order. Of course this is a massive topic, but I just wanted to highlight a few points today, raise a few questions, and of course look into this at some level where people can get focused, they can get serious about it, and of course take action. Let's get into it right away. A crisis in the future is unavoidable. Of course, you will hear it different from people like Janet Yellen and others in the mainstream media, but of course, you can see this time after time after time. Whether it's something that goes on in the stock market, whether it's happening as a natural event in history, whether it's a political issue, these crises are unavoidable. They're gonna happen. Nobody can predict the time frame as to when a cycle comes to an end. There are signs. There are indicators, but ultimately those in control of the financial system will decide when it happens. So they will pull the plug. They will dry up the liquidity. But ultimately, you have to be ready for anything. At least you have to do your best. We can only do so much. Previously in history, we have witnessed various forms of crises. That could be inflationary, deflationary, devaluation of the currency, stock market drops, bank runs, capital controls, and even many of these all at once. Once. There are so many examples all around the world, and this has destroyed the wealth of so many people, destroyed the freedoms and liberty, and of course we see it time and time again where the masses don't know what the hell just happened. The fact remains is that most people are unaware of what happened, and they are completely unprepared. Not a good combination. Look, if you were in a rural setting, and you had all the food you ever needed to eat, and you know, you lost your job for for example, you still have a roof over your head, you still have all that food to eat, you're going to do okay. But the average person living in a skyscraper and they are otherwise unable to fend for themselves, they're going to be in big, big trouble. How to prepare. The most important factor for preparation is to be mindful of your current position. Of course, this is so important. Where am I now? Where do I need to be? Are you over leveraged in your investments? Now you have to decide this for yourself. There are people who would say that this might be the case for themselves, but they can justify it because everything is gonna be okay. That's not the way we should be addressing this. We have to be mindful of our current position, our current situation. Are you in debt to a great degree? Now you might think to yourself that having a million dollar mortgage is okay because you have your income that brings in enough money so there's no need to worry. But what if that gets disrupted? Are you still able to pay all your bills? What are you going to do? Are you going to sell the home? Do you have that all ready to go? Are you already in a state of mind where if this happens, well then I'm going to do this and if that doesn't work out, I'm going to do this. Is that already decided? Well, you need to make sure that you have this all written down, all ready to go. Do you use margin in your paper asset purchases? I know a lot of people who do this thinking it's okay because they can multiply their success, but of course this is extremely dangerous. Works very well on the way up, not so good on the way down. Do you have an emergency fund? There are so many people who have no savings at all. They have no preparation made whatsoever. And what is your backup plan? If all else fails, what are you going to do? And it has to be an actual serious, well thought out backup plan, not like most people who say, well, you know what, I'll just get another job or I'll go back to the other place that I used to work at. No, no, that's not a backup plan. That's just nonsense. 
Diversification. As always, it's important to have diversification. We've heard this so many times before. Have a well-balanced portfolio. Have a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Well, that's not really a good thing to do if you want to be diversified. Not diversification as in a 401k with multiple paper assets. This is about owning different types of assets because some do better than others and some become undervalued for periods of time. We see this over the course of history where certain assets are overvalued. We have others that are undervalued and we should be, of course, as it says here, accumulating when assets are cheap or hold or trim the fat when they become expensive. A lot of people can't let go and they simply hold on for dear life. And of course, you have to be willing to take the losses. We don't know what's going to happen. I know a lot of people think that, well, I don't need to worry about my assets dropping because I'll get the dividend income. The dividend income is what I'm going to live off of. I'm going to do well. And then they actually open up a book and they learned a thing or two and realize, wait a minute, companies can stop giving dividends? Uh Uh-oh, that's not good. You really have to do your research. One of the easiest ways to mitigate any potential problems is to be ahead of the game. Reduce your consumption now. If you have TV and subscribe to cable with extra packages, you have Netflix, you have Disney, then you can figure out what you can cut out, okay? So this is what you need to look at. All of the things that you pay for on a monthly basis, do you actually need it? Do you actually use it? This is something that you have to decide, I can't help you with that but I know a lot of people who would actually fare a lot better if they cut a few of those services out I know you're thinking well it's only ten dollars a month well it's only twenty dollars a month but really we should be looking good and hard at this because as I say in the next line here if you reduce your expenses even by twenty dollars per month that will be major savings which can be put away for safekeeping okay it's up to you what you decide in that sort of investment or savings however you want to look at it but of of course, that is basically, in a sense, money wasted otherwise. What about your cell phone, internet, and insurance plans? Are these the most appropriate for your needs? Maybe you can reduce these or look for promotions. Right now, as I record this video, it's around the holiday season in 2019, where so many people are really getting discounts on a lot of things they're buying. But the people who already have these services, why aren't they going and seeking out better promotions. This is the best time to be doing that. It can happen, of course, at any time of the year. There are many strategies to get better deals, but you got to do this on your own and understand that there's always something better out there. So you should be doing this on a regular basis anyway. You pay for these services, why not get the best possible price or at least that which is most appropriate. So maybe you have an internet package and you know, it's super, super fast, but really you could do with one less and that's going to mean another 20 bucks in your pocket a month meal prepping. Meal prepping is something that a lot of people have been getting into right now and it's interesting because it helps people, the way I'm presenting it to you here, it helps people not have to then go out and buy a lunch that particular day because they didn't have any food ready. Maybe it's their breakfast or lunch or their dinner or whatever have you. It's all ready there. It's in the fridge. It's ready to go and all you got to do is pop it in the oven or whatever it is that you're doing with that. Now the bulk preparation of course course, just like anything else, buy in bulk, you save money. Okay, so this is something else. Maybe you want to buy a whole bunch of something, you want to freeze it, you want to can it, you want to split it between friends or family or whatever it is. This can all save money and help you be prepared. And wise shopping all make the difference. And by wise shopping, I mean going to places that are obviously going to give you a good deal, but not being ridiculous about it. You're not going to go drive, you know, 10 miles just to save two dollars okay that's not a smart thing to do okay so this is something that i just wanted to bring up because reducing your spending is going to help you out a lot but at the same time you want to increase your income if you're able to increase your income even by a small amount you can use that money to build your safety net a lot of people are just you know helpless in so many situations but you can always increase your income provide a service or sell a product that will be in demand 
plan now and in the medium term. You want to be able to have something that's going to be good today as well as tomorrow. Okay, maybe you don't know what's going to happen 20 years from now, but at least for the medium term, something that is beneficial to many people. And you have to think about it, even in a down economy. Okay, so if you sell a particular product or service that somehow is actually going to save somebody money. Okay, so let's say you're selling Tupperware, for instance. Well, that Tupperware, somebody might be buying in bulk, and then they put that in their Tupperware, and then they they freeze it well that's going to save them money so yeah they're still buying something they're still a consumer in this way but they're saving money long term so maybe they're not going to buy sweaters for their kittens but they're going to buy those other products that are there you got to think outside the box have multiple streams of income. This is a problem that so many people have. They only have one income and they really think that, well, okay, well, I'm going to have this income. Then when I'm 65, I'm going to retire and then I'm going to get my social security and I'll be just fine. That's not the way it works for so many people. You just have to look around. You have to ask around and you'll find that is the case. If one fails, you can always fall back onto something else. Have a business or income stream that works independently of your physical location. A lot of people, they are married to a particular location and that isn't always the best thing. We're going to talk about that more in a minute. Hold on to real assets because of their stability and security. Each real asset may provide you with benefits that the other can't give you. That's why I love the fact that there is so many different options out there. Robert Kiyosaki loves gold and silver specifically as your savings, but he also loves real estate for the cash flow and business for the leverage and the tax benefits. He also likes different commodities. Think about this, oil. He doesn't buy buy an oil ETF. He's actually in the oil wells. He is actually in business pumping the oil. Now that's a big difference from being an employee working on the oil well, an investor buying an ETF. No, he is right in there. We're talking about real assets as real as it can get. Now, obviously everybody can't afford that, but he didn't start that way either one step at a time. If your assets diminish in value significantly for a period of time, can you still manage? If you are trying to live off dividends, a pension, or dipping into your retirement account, will there be an issue if these are disrupted? That's a question you have to ask yourself. And this is really why we're doing this video today. A lot of people are unprepared and they should be asking these difficult questions. Debt. People are so heavily in debt today, more than ever before. I've covered that so many times here on the channel. All forms of debt pile up and it's difficult to shake off as interest accumulates, but income stays flat. So think about what people do. They're working their nine to five jobs. And of course, we see their income basically flat. Maybe they get a raise at the end of the year if they're lucky, but that interest every single month on their credit card is piling up and they get buried further, further, and further. You could speak to a professional. They have the ability to actually shake off some of the creditors and eliminate debt for you. I know a lot of people don't know that, but they can do this in many cases, not in all cases, but certainly in many cases. You can consolidate your debt to streamline and reduce your costs. Pay bills with the highest interest rate first. I know people that don't do that. They go for some other method. Maybe they think that one is more serious than the other. Attack those with the highest interest rate first first, get that sorted out and move on. Where you live plays a major role in your cost of living and living standards in general. A person in San Francisco making $80,000 per year may be in a very tight financial situation. However, someone making the same amount, doing the same work, living in Ohio might be living well. You have to address this, of course, for yourself. Each and every person is going to have their own situation, but I'm simply bringing this up to remind people that where you live could be the only problem you have. Take action. Without you actually taking some of this and putting it to work, you will be nothing but a statistic in the fallout. Since we have fire departments, why do we bother with insurance and fire extinguishers? Somebody else will take care of everything. I don't need to worry. My house is in perfectly good order. Multiple layers, diversification in a sense. Be wise and take action. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it.
If you want to build a business, if you want a secondary passive income all online, independent of your location, I created the Amazon GPS. It's a free 100% free e-course teaching people how to sell on Amazon. It's at the amazongps.com. If you want to learn the ins and outs of the financial system, if you want to learn how to make money, if you want to know how to reduce your debt and so much more, these two books have everything you need. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Solutions, solutions, solutions. You wanted it, you got it. I have hours and hours in this playlist and my others. Click on it and I will see you there.